car rental, you know, that one you're probably going to, again, if you have a, an agency that you book through, they can probably provide that for you. If not, you're going to likely have to um, back it out from bills and say, okay, well, how much do we spend on gas? And what's the cost of gas, you know, per, you know, mile per the car that you're trying to get? And back that out to your dollar figure of how many miles you spent. For commuting data, if you're within an organization that has to report to a state or a, a county agency that has commute trip reduction, you probably, someone with an HR has already got this data for you. It might be a year too old, but you can use that. So see if you can have that data. If not, doing a simple survey through SurveyMonkey, what you want to find is, you know, what are the different modes that people are getting to work? Whether are they driving alone, are they carpooling, are they busing, are they driving a motorcycle, taking a train, subway, or an electric vehicle? Maybe they're walking, they're biking. But you want to find out what's the mode, how many miles they're going, how many days a week, and you multiply that to each one and get it. And again, SurveyMonkey is a great tool for doing that because you can build the back end so it calculates for you automatically. Here's just an example of sample commuting data that you could pull from a SurveyMonkey that shows you, you know, the different ways that people can get to work. So, for example, if you look in columns C, E, and G, it allows the employee to determine, you know, what percent of their travel do they bus, do they carpool, or do they drive alone. So if somebody drives alone, you know, 100% of the time or 90% of the time, it allows some opportunity. Most employees go to work the same way every day. But for those employees who maybe, you know, during bike to work month, maybe they 5% of the time in the total year, they're gonna bike to work. It allows you to capture it, but also see the distance of traveling and all the associated emissions that'll be going with it. So SurveyMonkey is a great tool to use for this if you already don't have a commuter production program in place. Paper data, you're basically trying to find the reams, pounds, or boxes of paper that you're using and the recycled content, whether it's zero, 30%, or 100%. The best source for getting that is um, if you can go to, if you have an office provider, a Staples, or you know, a, an Office Depot Max, or a Keeney's Office Solution, whoever it is. If not, go to look at the invoices. Your office manager will have that. You can pull that information. Then if you can't get that, Get your total cost of paper purchased and the content, and again, just try and back it out from the different invoices. You know, sometimes you just have to, you know, you know that you spent $1,200 on paper and then all you purchased was 30%. Well, you might just have to look online, say, you know, what's a box of 30% paper cost and divide out, and that'll tell you how many sheets of paper you use. So, you know, there's ways of getting at everything if you can't find the primary data. So I'm going through this detail for you because like I mentioned, you're not always gonna get the primary data, so you have to have that secondary way of getting there. Waste and recycling, now this is, this is actually the most difficult one. If you have the direct utility bill, you're gonna get that. So you, what you're really looking for is pounds, tons, or cubic yards that you're, you know, whatever your dumpster is, is coming in. Frequency of pickups and container size can help on that. But if you can't get it, let's say you lease uh, in an office like a lot of organizations do, and you just, as part of your triple net lease, you pay a dollar figure for utilities. Well, then you have to, again, take your overall costs, find out what the average cost per ton, say, of a waste haul is in your region, and then backtrack to get your quantity, and that's a one way of doing it. Again, here's a, uh, a sample bill that you can look for. What, what's the the unit that you're looking for, you see that in gallon of recycled there and a two yard load. So you, you have to make sure that you're not using the, the wrong, you know, data source on this, that you're going between yards and gallons and you can also see the different taxes there. Shipping and freight, again, this is, this is a, a difficult thing because, you know, for an office-based business, you probably don't have a lot of shipping. You're probably just using FedEx and UPS um, and you can go to them and they'll provide it for you. If you're a manufacturer or an outdoor retailer or a company that, you know, a, a clothing and a logistics store, you need to know, you know, not only what did you ship, but how many miles per shipment and what was the weight, you know, per mode. And so again, looking at that through your vendor, through your shipping and logistics department, they'll be able to help you get that. And if you can't get that, the secondary option is you look at your total number of shipments, you assign them across the four different categories, what's the average weight, average mile distance, and you have to make an estimation. This is the most difficult one for a lot of organizations to do. So if you can, work with your shipping department or shipping provider, they'll give it to you. If not, the, the methodology there is a little less sound in the estimation, but it'll still help you get something to help you calculate your footprint. 
Again, here's just an example of what some sample shipping data may look like in Excel for you, and that helps you get a, an understanding of where it's coming from.